Okay, in today's How's the Market, I'm going to bring on a special guest, Simon Pomfret from Iris Research. He's going to be giving us his insights from a stats point of view. So, as you guys know that's been listening for a little while, I come on every month and tell everyone about you know, what the market's doing and I call it as I see it from the coalface. Simon today is going to give a little bit of insight on how the market's going in Wollongong from a research point of view and it's very interesting to hear his thoughts and I really hope you enjoy this interview because it's coming from an expert in the industry who really knows his facts and figures. Today with my How's the Market video, I'm bringing back to the How's the Market, Simon Pomfret from Iris Research. Thanks for coming along. No problems. I agree. It's a real pleasure to talk to you because what I do on a monthly, month to month basis is I give everyone a snapshot of my point of view. So yep. obviously from the coalface, I tell everyone about how I feel the market's going, the things that I can foresee, how things are happening in terms of numbers to open homes, property prices. But I want you here today because it was in December last year where we spoke last and we had a situation where the market was just starting to really show some life. Uh, days on market were coming down. There was some consumer confidence that was on the rise at that time. Uh, people were starting to buy into units. The investors were coming back. But there was still a bit of hesitancy around the market and around how much legs it'll go. So mm -hmm. here we are, we fast forward six months down the track, we've gone through a huge market. Very little property on the market, huge buy demand, low interest rates, people are paying good dollars for property out there, fighting over it. And it's interesting that I bring you here today because we've had a budget talk, we've mm -hmm. had you know a few things around the release of the budget, and all of a sudden things are starting to change a little bit. So let's hear from you because you're the facts and figures guy, right? So you guys do all the research and I can tell everyone what it's like from the coalface, but can you give us maybe a snapshot of how you've seen from December last year to today and maybe if your crystal ball still works, where things are going to go to in the future? Go for it. Okay then, Adrian. Yes, definitely over the last six months we've seen an improvement in confidence both on the consumer and business side and we can see in terms of also the commercial investment that's going on around Wollongong and things were starting to improve. Businesses were sort of downsized enough, they were starting to sort of get back on the front foot and uh, that's all good news for, for how the economy was travelling and uh, 2013 in terms of the first four or five months looked like we're in for a reasonable year for, for Wollongong. Uh, the property market as you say has been fairly warm and you know I know the, mar uh, the real estate pundits are saying very hot yeah. um, and prices they've slowly crept up um, I know you said that uh, people are paying ridiculous prices and things like that mm. but as an overall picture um, the market you know has probably gone up about five percent in terms of the median price uh, mm. certainly in some of those I suppose more affordable areas around Wollongong the Unindera, Cordo Heights those type of areas yeah. we've seen rises up to eight and ten percent in the median price Gotcha. Um, so people are still willing to, um, you know, I suppose outlay a little bit more, um, but they're not getting in those huge sort of uh, prices in terms of some of the high price suburbs, say okay. up north sort of thing. So um, the volume, as you know, is held up fairly steady, but we're mm. not seeing huge volumes because there's not a huge stock out there. Yep. Um, so you would probably think in terms of the uh, laws of supply and demand that prices should have rose more than what they did um, and probably just something like what was happening in Sydney. Mm. But they've just seen a gradual creep so it's been all good I suppose in terms of the property market and if people see that the prices are rising they're a little bit more confident and uh, that flows on to other things. The other good thing that we did see in the first uh, four or five months is an improvement in our residential building approvals. You know, been fairly low okay. for a number of years. Yeah. So there was a, a lot of approvals, particularly from single houses so adding to the stock of housing, which okay. will certainly help the overall property market and, and the overall affordability of the market. So people were out there getting back involved in, in the building side. Uh, the units probably went off a little bit because we had a lot of approvals over the last couple of years and we're seeing yeah. them now get built. Coming out of the ground. Coming out of the ground. Mm. Um, so we'd expect, you'd think now, that uh, there'll be the next lot of uh, unit approvals coming through from investors. So we'll wait and see for that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some 
particularly good news. Um, and then we've had a, a federal budget that uh, everyone thinks was very harsh. Yeah. And also we've seen over the last couple of weeks a lot of announcements locally, you know, probably up to half a dozen announcements of, of job cuts in the mining industries and mm. the engineering and manufacturing industries. So all of a sudden we've got this X factor come out and hit us yep. in the face and, and uh, people are starting to get nervous again. Okay. So probably in my opinion is that things are going to have a little bit of a breather mm -hmm. in terms of the property market um, and that's probably what's going to happen over the next six months. Wow, it's interesting you say that. I mean a lot of the information that I think the locals get is not... Um, specific to the Wollongong area, that mm -hmm. we're going off the back of, say, if anyone's watched an RP data report, yeah, yeah. then it's generally based around Sydney prices. Now, it's interesting you say properties have gone up, you would say in some most areas 5%, the median price has gone in some areas up to 10, 8, 10%, but you're hearing Sydney markets, they've gone up 15 and 16%. Yeah. So, question for you, do you think that we've still got a lot of life left in the market? Is we're generally in my eyes sort of six, 12 months behind Sydney. So yep. is next year still going to go forward? You think, or do you think that we've we're in line with with what Sydney's done? Uh, it's interesting because we do tend to follow Sydney, um, and and I think we're on that six months probably pattern of following. So that hopefully may sort of. Uh, kick things along and we won't see a sort of a drop off that uh, we're starting to maybe see in the Sydney market. Mm -hmm. But I think it also comes down to, to um, the overall demand in terms of the population base. And you're talking yeah. about a huge population up there. Yeah. And even though we didn't have a lot of properties on the market for sale, mm. you know, and people were still bidding for properties and things like that, we probably still haven't got the volume of people out there looking for properties. Right. Um, local properties, um, we're not getting, you know, huge population growth, we're not getting um, the net migration and things like that so mm -hmm. um, I expect you know you look at our prices over the last five six years and we've always just ticked along at that two to three percent a year all of a sudden we get a, a keen interest and it goes to that five and ten percent so right. we'll probably still tick along at that two to three percent you know we're not going to see a, a fall in property prices okay Good news. Um, in terms of I don't expect we see an overall fall yeah um, because there's always that underlying demand and with a shortage of properties like you say we have mm. um, that demand is, is still going to be fulfilled in some way so do you think um, with the fact that like you said before a lot of people now they're seeing a crane on every corner but they're in most cases they're old approvals meaning that the developers had that approved for some time and now they're starting to get built because they've hung on through the poor times. So do you think now we'll still see a, a glut of units come on the market or do you think that that supply and demand uh, is still there in terms of the unit market? Because I've noticed a lot of investors really come back and the unit market is a popular choice. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I'm hearing too from my mail is that these these properties, are, you know, they're almost fully occupied before they're starting to be built, Yeah. Um, which is good news for the banks in terms yeah. of lending the money. Um, they don't have to sort of change their rules now in terms of occupancy. So uh, there's still that demand. Um, mm -hmm. And I think yeah, it's that demand in terms of we're not building an oversupply you know they're smart you yeah. know they're not we're not having this huge oversupply of of uh, apartments like we had 10 to 15 years ago where they then couldn't get rid of them mm. so I think they've really gauged the market and they're coming a lot smarter in terms of when to get the approvals in and, and then when to go so, yeah. yeah okay so in terms of if we can maybe move our attention to interest rates I mean I know you're not the RBA but <laughs> you know I mean, what are, we, what are we going to be seeing in terms of interest rates because, I mean, a lot of people are locking in their rates now. They're going for a bit of a safety and, and locking in their rates and they're getting really good rates. Do you think that's going to last? I think it's going to last for a bit anyway, probably at least another six months because yeah. of uh, confidence. Um, we're going to see some indicators coming out. They're already coming out now that uh, confidence started to weigh after the announcements of the federal budget. Mm. Um, employment growth is still, is, is still kicking along, but certainly, you know, the forecast are all there to see that unemployment is going to increase yeah. um, which you know puts downward pressures on the CPI um, if that CPI is within the RBA range they're not going to move um, yeah. and I think they, they won't move for quite some time certainly I don't see them they're going to be doing any cuts yeah. um, I think we've seen the bottom of it yeah. um, but certainly I think uh, most banks and um, most sort of commentators out there are saying we're not going to see another interest rate rise until probably next year okay
Well, that's good news for <laughs> investors and everyone, really. All right, so maybe if we can talk a little about suburbs. What do you think in terms of maybe a suburb that people are looking to move into and to invest into? Any hot tips in terms of maybe a suburb that is up and coming? <laughs> as long as I don't care. Yeah, I'll put a proviso on everything yeah, I'll say in this comment. A disclaimer bottom, yeah. at the bottom of it. Um, I think, uh, well, if you look at the affordable, it's those affordable ones that uh, seem to have the demand. Um, we are still a reasonable uh, lower socioeconomic area. Um, incomes are not totally high sort of thing. We've still got a high unemployment rate. We've got that high social security sort of thing. So in terms of rental accommodation, you know, people can afford that $400 a week sort of thing. So they're the types of properties, you know, they're yeah. getting snapped up since they come on the market. Sure. Um, and that's why we're seeing price rises in, you know, the Unidera's of the world and Mount Kem and uh, and uh, Kem Mount Kembler down there and those yeah. type of areas that they're Farm sort of Hyde, in, Farm Berkeley, all, all those, those ones areas are coming up. Coming up and they're, they're getting their five, their eights and tens every year and they've yeah. had it for quite some time because they're still in that affordable. Um, certainly, no, no more, uh, no less affordable than they were years ago. But, yeah. um, but it's still relativity, and uh, they're still relative affordable suburbs. So that's where you know you're going to see the see the increases. I think where mm. your far northern suburbs, you know, they could, you know, they go up and down like a yo-yo. Yeah, that's right. Mm. It's more of a lifestyle thing, isn't it? Well, it certainly is. Yeah, and um, and you know, there's some big prices out there. You got to pay for those type of properties. True. All right, so it's been interesting talking to you. Just so we can summarise, uh, we've certainly seen some growth in the market. Um, it looks like that that might maybe waver a little bit in the sense that it's not going to go up in leaps and bounds the next 12 months. It could be just a steady growth. Interest rates are going to stay, hopefully, the way they are for a little while longer. Some up and coming suburbs. So a lot of people have discounted a certain suburb. They won't go this far <laughs> west or this far south or whatever it might be but maybe people should open up their eyes to different suburbs from an affordability point of view, but also maybe from a rental return point of view, you can see a lot of infrastructure happening. A few concerns around the budget, that's obviously going to affect small business, and, um, but looks like it's going to be more of an even market, would you say? Yeah, I think um, when well, it, it, I think as you say, the demand is going to fall off. So um, there's going to be some opportunities out there, um, and particularly, you know, you look at some of the areas in Shell Harbour and how that's growing with its infrastructure. So there's a focus there as well. Yeah. Um, so that's another good area that um, that seems to be kicking along well. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you need any more help or hints, please feel free to subscribe down below and stay up to date with my blogs. If you'd like to contact me directly, please go to my website, www.adriandomico.com.au. Chat to you soon.